Rajeshwari MJ. She pursued her BE in Electrical and Electronics at the People's Education Society College of Engineering, Mandya. She pursued her M.Tech in VLSI Design and Embedded Systems at the Sri Jagadguru Balagangadharanta Institute of Technology, Bangalore. Her personal skills lie in good verbal and written communication skills. Her areas of interest lie in OOPS with C++, Renewable Energy Sources, HVDC Transmission, Digital Relays, Automotive Electronics, Advances in VLSI Design. She has also had papers presented at the national level such as the innovative architecture for SOC multi core hybrid processor presented at the RNSIT Bangalore. Welcome to UGC lecture series of BSc Applied Electronics. Today we are dealing with the subject television and engineering. Let us start uh, some of the topics in unit 3. The content that uh, we are going to discuss today are deflection oscillator, sink waveform separation and sweep circuit. In the sweep circuit, we are going to concentrate on vertical sweep model that is vertical sweep circuit we are going to uh, study in detail. First, we start with the deflection oscillator. We already studied in the previous session the deflection oscillator is necessary to get the deflection signal from the oscillator. This signal is going to send to the deflection coils according to the magnitude of the frequency. Uh, the output from the oscillator is sent to the amplifier where the amplifier going to amplify it uh, the output of the amplifier will give a current that current will going to create a magnetic field in the deflection coil this will going to helpful in the deflection of a deflecting coil in a picture tube. So, what are the main things of deflection coil is deflection oscillator is used to produce a output that is very useful for a deflection coil the output from the amplifier which is useful for a creating the magnetic field magnetic field dependent on the amount of current that is produced from the amplifier so the proper vertical and horizontal driving voltage must be first produced by a synchronized oscillators and associated wave shaping circuit. So, so, there are two things in a deflection oscillator. One is wave shaping circuit and another one is oscillator. These two will give a voltage, proper voltage of horizontal and vertical signals. So, we know that vertical uh, deflection will have a vertical uh, sync signal will have a frequency of 50 hertz and uh, uh, for a horizontal it will be of 15,625 hertz. This driving waveform is next sent to that is the output from the oscillator is sent to the amplifier where sufficient current for the deflection of a mag deflecting coil that is which will going to produce a proper magnetic field for the deflection that amount of current will be produced by a amplifier. This can be easily studied with the help of the diagram deflection oscillators and wave shaping circuit diagram. This is what the diagram where we are going to input the vertical sync input. This is a vertical sync input there the oscillator will going to have a frequency of 50 hertz. The output from the oscillator is given to the wave shaping circuit that is this wave shaping circuit will going to eliminate the unwanted signals and send the send the output to the amplifier for the next process. So, similarly the same DC control voltage will send to the horizontal oscillator that will going to have a frequency of 15625 hertz. The output from the oscillator is again sent to the wave shaping circuit. We will get the horizontal deflection output that will going to send to the amplifier for the process. And what type of oscillator that we are using in the deflection oscillator is most important that is we are going to use a free running oscillator. Why we are going to use free running relaxation type of oscillator is used in a deflection oscillator. This will going to give us a proper voltage for a deflection that is why we are going to use free running relaxation type of oscillator and this will going to easily lock the synchronism with the incoming sync pulse. So, it has to lock with the sync pulse also whenever the receiver get the vertical sync pulse from the sync separator 
the oscillator has to vibrate it with the according frequency and it has to send to the amplifier and the output from the amplifier should be have a magnitude of current which will going to give a proper deflection. So, this has to be synced with the sync pulse then only we will get a proper image on the screen. So, the oscillators commonly used as a deflection oscillator some of the types that we are going commonly used uh, as a deflection oscillator whether it is vertical oscillator or horizontal uh, oscillator. Some of the type are blocking oscillator, multi vibrator, next one is complementary pair relaxation oscillator. This uh, complementary pair relaxation is, uh, oscillator is, is studied in detail in the upcoming slides. Next is a overdriven sine wave oscillator. All the three, the blocking oscillator, multi vibrator, and overdriven sine wave oscillator can be constructed with the help of transistor, with the transistor and as well as tube. But this complementary pair relaxation oscillator will constructed with only help of transistor. So, let us study the complementary symmetric relaxation oscillator. So, what are the properties, how the circuit will be? The circuit consists of Q1 and Q2. Q2 will be the NPN transistor, Q1 will be the PNP transistor. You can observe from the figure, Q1 and Q2 will be there, Q2 will be the NPN transistor, Q1 will be the PNP transistor. Here, there is a potential divider is connected to the Q1 where which is and C1 will be the which will going to uh, having a, a voltage of 220 volts which will going to discharge and uh, charge during the conduction of a Q1. So, while Q3 and another uh, transistor will be there, the Q3 is acts as a wave shaping transistor. The resistor R1 and R2, these are the two resistors which will going to form as a potential divider that is connected across the VCC that is uh, supply and the D through the decoupling network R3 and R6. This is where we are going to connect this R3 and Rc is called as a decoupling network. We are going to connect R1 and R2 across the supply voltage with the help of R3 and R C6 which is called as a decoupling network. This will going to provide as a positive voltage both at the base of Q1 and collector of Q2. The voltage at the emitter Q1 is developed by a capacitor C1. So, whatever the voltage is developed by Q1 that will be charged by C1 and it is going to charge to a supply voltage that is 20 volts through which uh, resistant the resistor R4 is connected and a potentiometer. This is a potentiometer R5. The C1 is going to charge to a, up to a voltage of 20 volts through R4 and a potentiometer of R5. Next, when DC supply is switched on, both the transistor are in cutoff. When the DC supply we are going to give, then both the transistor Q1 and the Q2 are in positively biased and it is both the Q1 and Q2 are in cutoff. So, because Q1 is biased positively and its emitter is at zero potential. This is the emitter part of a Q1 where we need to bias with the positive. So, it has to be dry with a positive voltage. When the rising voltage across the C1 offsets the positive voltage. So, we need a positive voltage to make this a on this uh, transistor Q1 to on. So, the driving voltage from the C1 will going to make the transistor Q1 on and also this will going to make a Q2 positive which also going to conduction. So, both will be in conduction. The collector current, the collector current of Q2 flows through R1. This collector current will go to flows through the R1. So, the when Q1 and Q2 conducts, the collector current of the Q2 will flows through the R1 and resulting drop across the lower potential of the base Q1 make more negative with respect to emitter. This is how when Q1 and Q2 are conducted. So, when Q1 and Q2 are conducted with the help of uh, peak voltage that is from uh, uh, C1, we will get a drop in a R1. So, this will going to result in current through Q1. So, due to the resistance decrease in the resistance with the current in the Q1 will be increased. This and the regeneration feedback action that follows soon 
by the saturation of q1 when q1 is on its emitter current starts discharging so that initially it will use a peak voltage of c1 after when it is on the, the discharging of the c1 will be soon started and as the emitter voltage drops sufficiently so when the emitter voltage is drops this uh, then we can say that q2 will be in a turn off position this is a regenerative cycle and this process will be starts again with the charging of c1 and with this is how it works complementary symmetry relaxation oscillator this is the wave shaping circuit the output is will be which is given to the vertical amplifier these are the three outputs from three different points this is from the q2 that is where we get the base from the base of the q2 this will be the waveform that what we get and from the q1 from the emitter part the waveform will be like a sawtooth and third one the waveform in the wave shaping will be also sawtooth this uh, is the three output that we get from a complementary symmetry relaxation oscillator next we move on to horizontal deflection amplifier till now we studied about the oscillator the next block will be the amplifier as we know so uh, let us know about the horizontal deflection amplifier the amplifier will be looks like this where from the uh, we are going to give the input from which is is the output of the horizontal to the amplifier this is net fed to the output amplifier where it is connected to the transformer and also automatic frequency controller and also automatic gain controller there will be another type of control is there that is width controller will be there and this will be also having another circuit that is est that is xsu high tension circuit will be there this is all this will be connected to the deflection coil so the end will be horizontal deflection coil where the yoke will this uh, will going to produce a magnetic field according to that the deflection of the coil will be takes place the amplifier employs a beam power tube having high voltage and the power rating this is having a, about 80 volt 80 volt will be the input of the amplifier and it is of trapezoidal which is obtained from the horizontal oscillator it is the waveform should be of trapezoidal form and it also in some circuit it may be of a sawtooth type of input also we can use for a amplifier input in case some other application the input signal grid current flows to develop self bias in some of the cases the input signal a grid current flows to develop the self bias so the input signal makes the grid current and it will going to help in a self biasing of the circuit so the time constant of the coupling network c1 r1 is so chosen we need to choose c1 and r1 approximately half the cycle of the input signal so that the grid voltage will be less negative at that point the current will be flown so we need to choose half the value of the input signal that can be helpful for us to make a less negative than what the it is is going to cut off next it this will going to a linear rise of plate current so this is in the grid current flow we can easily observe this is a cut off bias below this there will be no conduction above this there will be conduction the of the whenever the magnitude of the current will be above this the current will be present in the plate so this will going to rise linear rise of a plate current to cause part deflection plate will be deflected and the electron will be ejected with no input drive present so if there is no input drive present the bias would be zero because there is no provision for a self bias in the cathode so uh, always the grid current flow will makes the deflection of a coil because the grid current flow will help in increase in the plate current the output tube from the v1 the output tube v1 should not be operated with the grid drive so grid drive will helps in the operation of a uh, amplifier so the output from the drive because in the absence of any protective bias the tube will draw excessive current so the drive current makes uh, sure of to operate the amplifier in a limited manner so if some of the current is exceed also the drive current will going to control that amount the slow blow fractional ampere fuse f is provided in the cathode circuit to protect the tube and transform against the excessive current 
So, this is one of the thing that we need to know. The screen grid has a usual decoupling network and a provision to control screen grid voltage. So, the screen grid also have a decoupling network and this will going to control the screen grid voltage. So, the variation of so uh, from this all the studies that we are going to uh, note on that the grid or uh, the grid voltage will going to helps us in controlling the amplifier. So, variation of R2 changes the plate current and thus acts as a width control. So, whatever the variation this changes will help in a control of a width. This is why it is called as if you change the value of R2 the width will be controlled. So, next some of the things using the horizontal amplifier controls we can control some of the things uh, like a drive control can be there drive width control will be there. How these things can be controlled with the help of horizontal amplifier let us see. But in the previous session we also discussed about many things um, like in a TV front panel that we are going to control volume or width or hold or, or um, program everything will be controlled, but that and all will be in the different manner. But one of the things also uh, that if we are want to uh, increase the brightness, if brightness it is always depend on the amplitude or intensity of the beam that is the uh, intensity of the light that is ejected on the screen. So, this can be directly coupled with the amplitude of the gain of a uh, uh, amplifier. So, amplifier output of the amplitude will be the main reason to control the brightness of a screen. So, like this we can control the some other factor also with the help of horizontal amplifier control. So, let us start with the drive control. In drive control it can be used to adjust the width of the raster by varying peak to peak amplitude of the drive voltage at the amplifier. Again we are going to uh, control a thing with the help of a amplitude of the amplifier only. So, the voltage amplitude will take will make a major role here. So, if we change the amplitude of voltage amplitude we can change the width of a screen. So, width of the raster width of the screen or raster can be changed in the amplitude of a voltage from the amplifier. So, a capacitive or resistive potentiometer is provided in the grid circuit to control the magnitude of the input voltage. So, we already studied that there should be a capacity or resistive potentiometer that is already studied here which will going to control the magnitude of a voltage from the amplifier will be controlled with this uh, circuit R2. In modern diseases we can use instead of uh, using this we can use another type that is width of a picture is adjusted by controlling current in the deflection coils. Another technique also is that is by controlling the deflection coils current. And another thing optimum drive voltage is obtained by adjusting output voltage of the horizontal oscillator. So, we can get optimum voltage only with the help of oscillator output. So, oscillator output also plays a major role when we want to get a output from the amplifier with the optimum output of a amplifier. So, next will be the width control. In the width control what are the things can be controlled with the help of circuit we can study. There are four methods of controlling width and it will be with the help of four different windings. It is shown in the figure it is clearly mentioned that is this is the first this is the first width control as we studied and this can be controlled by varying the amplitude of voltage from the amplifier and this is a width second width control third width control this is the fourth width control we can study from first width control now this control operates by varying the screen grid voltage of the amplifier tube by increase in screen voltage causing an increase in a plate current so this means an increase in deflection energy which is converted to an increase in horizontal deflection so reducing the screen voltage simultaneously reduce the plate current and it will going to reduce the screen size. So, this will going to play major role in the width control of the raster. Second thing in this method a small variable coil that is 10 to 40 uh, milli henry is placed across part of the flyback transistor. It acts as an additional load on the horizontal output stage and absorbs some of the energy so that a reduction in its inductance causes higher current flow. So, some of the inductance coils will make higher current flow 
to the coil and thus less current flows through the yoke. This re results in reduction of picture width. So, we can reduce the picture width by increasing or decreasing the current flowing in the coils. So, the third method, third uh, width control will be a variation of the above method is to place a coil in series with the deflection winding. So, in the case the width control limits the current that can flow through the yoke. So, in some of the case what we are going to know we need to limit the current so that we can limit the size also. So, shorting uh, it will result in maximum deflection another technique that we can use so that we can reduce the current so that we can achieve maximum deflection. Note that using a coil rather than a resistor as a width control has an advantages because using a coil we can easily control the yoke current so that the screen width can also be controlled with the using a coil. Coil is most preferred than a resistor yoke. In the fourth uh, width control method a small capacitor C1 that is 50 to 150 picofarad is connected across a deflection coils. This can be observed from the figure the fourth one where the C1 is connected here uh, which will going to help in a width control. This lowers the resonance frequency though so C1 will going to uh, reduce the frequency of the self oscillator. So, we will reduce the frequency of the self oscillator a lower frequency increases the retrace time. So, if the frequency is less the retrace time will be increase which in turn cause a high voltage to decrease. So, high voltage will be reduced here. So, any reduction in the picture tube anode voltage lowers the beam velocity. So, this will going to affect the beam. So, the beam velocity will be lowered because of the reduction in the voltage. And thus, the beam stays for longer period under the influence of deflection field and more deflection is caused. Due to this the reduce in the voltage and the velocity of the beam there will be a more stay of beam will stay for a longer time on the screen this will going to influence the more deflection value should be always chosen for the optimum deflection. Next we move on to these are the four types of width control that can be done with the uh, horizontal oscillator. Next we move on to types of tuner. Uh, this is how the physical appearance of a tuner. Frequency tuner is uh, classified according to based on the wide range of a revenue frequency band. There are three types one is normal tuner, second one is super band tuner and third one is hyper band tuner. The first one is normal tuner, the tuner that can receive broadcast on air which can receive and also it can broadcast on the air uh, that is TV in the frequency band that is having a frequency band of uh, range VHS very high frequency band 1 2 very low 41 to 68 megahertz. This is the frequency range for a normal tuner and band 3 this is for band 1 and this is for band 3 very high will be 174 to 230 megahertz. So, next is the frequency of UHF band 4 that is U 472 581 megahertz. Next will be band 5 that is U 582 to 960 megahertz. So, band 287.5 to 104 megahertz is used for FM radio this is a standard one this band there will be no picture signal transmission only the FM signal uh, has to be transmitted in this range that is 87.5 to 104 megahertz. And VL and VH bands used for broadcast channels 2 through 12. So, U bands used for broadcast channels 21 to 69. So, there will be normal tuner also 3 range will be there that is VL, VH and U. VL and VH will be broadcast channels 2 through 12 and after that 21 to 69 will be broadcasted by U bands. So, next will be super band tuner and hyper band. The tuner will be uh, super band hyper band the name itself says the band frequency for this two will be higher than the normal tuner. The tuner can receive a uh, broadcast as normal tuner plus the ability to receive broadcast off air also that is cable television will be there. For table television the super band tuner and hyper band tuner are used. S band using frequency band between VL and VH. So, for S band these are the frequency range that is VL to 
real that is what we previously discussed the, uh, from 41 to 68 megahertz and 174 to 230 megahertz this will be VL and VH range for H band using a frequency band between VH and U similarly the, for super band tuner can receive uh, broadcast band for uh, band of range S so hyper band tuner can receive broadcast band and S band and H band also along with this. So, what are the things that we can study with the super band hyper band means along with the normal tuner frequency it can also broadcast a higher range band also. So, what are the types of bands used for cable channel allocations? What are the bands means usually we consider the India adopted the CCIRB uh, standard. So, we considered on that a band space of 8 megahertz will be allowed for a cable channels because 1 megahertz will be addition usually 7 megahertz is the standard one but here 8 megahertz means addition 1 megahertz acts as a guard band that is going to prevent the adjacent interference to prevent interference the 1 megahertz guard band will be added and the cable network frequency usually should be 470 megahertz some of the bands of a cable channel allocations are mid band that is uh, the range will be 104 to 174 megahertz that is for channel S1 to S10 and uh, for super band 230 to 300 megahertz S11 to S20 channel hyper band 302 to 470 megahertz S21 to S41 will be the channel and also the cable ready receivers which are the receivers can directly receive all cable channels which have gone up to about 100 or more than that also which can directly receive and also using super band and hyper band in high VHF and UHF bands 4 and 5 we can able to achieve more than 100 channels um, directly from the cable receiver. So, the receiver can tune any channel sent by cable TV system to uh, system no need of set top box here set top box will going to convert the analog signal to digital signal. So, this the set top box converter is not required for of CATV system. Some of the cable channel used for uh, by cable operators in US are discussed here because this will going to give a clear picture how the things are. Midway uh, VHF band will be of this range and this will be also allotted for FM aeronautical purpose and this is VHF band normally for TV this range of uh, frequency will be used that is 174 to 216 super band will be 216 to 300 this will allot it for again aeronautical and other services we normally consider on tv channel that lies in a 174 to 216 so uh, let's have a quick summary of the session we actually studied about the deflection oscillator so the deflection oscillator will give going to give a horizontal and vertical deflection which will going to come across with the oscillators and also with the wave shaping circuits uh, the proper uh, output from the oscillator will going to give to the amplifier which will going to give a um, proper current that proper current will going to helps in a giving the magnetic field that will helps in the deflection of the deflection coil and next we are going to concentrate uh, on the complementary symmetry or relaxation oscillator one of the type of the oscillator here only transistor are used to form this kind of oscillator and it is uh, works efficiently and uh, next we are move on to horizontal amplifier amplifiers are uh, going to ma improve the inputs from the oscillator which will going to help for the deflection of a coil so this can be used for drive the drive and width control horizontal amplifier will going to help in controlling the drive and width and the last topic we discussed is about the tuners there are three different tuners will be there normal tuner and super band tuner hyper band tuner super band hyper band tuner will be of more uh, commonly used nowadays because it can have a frequency of higher range compared to the normal tuner let us have some of the questions of this topic I explain the working of complementary symmetry relaxation oscillator which are the different types of tuners used in TV receivers which are the types of bands used for cable channel allocations references you go for further studies you can uh, visit the we website engineeringtv.com or tvtechnology.com for further study you can refer the textbook basic television principle and servicing by Bernard Grob and television and video engineering by A.M. Daki this ends the session thank you Thank you.